Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today, I'm going to be designing a t-shirt and it's going to be basically what I wear uh, whenever it arrives, like in a week or whatever, for the beginning of each of these videos. So up until today or in a week from now, I've always weared this uh, jacket, but now that it's springtime, it's warming up, I kind of want to get into a t-shirt instead. So I'm going to take a different approach to this uh, Circle A. It's going to actually, uh, it kind of makes more sense to uh, switch to the design course letter mark. So that's what I'm going to be doing today in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm also going to uh, use a site uh, for printing t-shirts and other stuff at Zazzle.com. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and play around with that as well. All right. So there's no project files really. Oh, wait, you know, yeah, there is, because if you want to follow along, I'm not sure why you would want to use this logo to print your own design course shirt. You probably don't. You don't care. But uh, I will make that available, the design course lettermark logo. Uh, so you can get that at designcourse.com. And, yeah, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and subscribe here at YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so I have Adobe Illustrator open up here along with the designcourse.com lettermark logo. And... Basically, instead of just using the logo itself, putting it on a shirt, you know, I decided to take maybe just a step further um, and just to do something interesting with it. So uh, I'm going to include this as the project files that you can download at designcourse.com uh, if you want to follow along. So I'm going to go ahead to File New and I already have it set here. My width and height 17.9 inches by 19 inches so make sure your units is set to inches and you can just specify that information that's kind of a standard t-shirt size for some uh of the print uh or t-shirt printing places so i uh, also make sure cmyk here we'll hit okay and what i want to do is come over here copy that Control c close that out and then we'll paste it in all right so I want to make the background black, so I'm just going to take the rectangle tool and we're not going to include the black background obviously when we save this, but just to give us an idea of what it might look like on the shirt. So I'm just going to drag that down there and make it black and then also lock the layer so we can't select it anymore. And select a move tool, take this and we'll make this white. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to make everything on this shirt white so it'll be a black shirt and everything else is going to be white all right so what i want to do is kind of scale this up holding shift and i'm just going to come down just for now and leave it right here near, near the middle and i kind of want to make it look as though there's like a selection around it kind of just like this or in photoshop or whatever you kind of have like the marching ants i guess you call them uh so what we can do is take the rectangle tool and try to create a square around it. If you hold shift, it won't work because the logo itself isn't uh, a square proportionally. So we'll just drag and try to eyeball it right around there. We'll drag it beneath that logo layer. And here in the swatches, we'll hit none. And then I'm going to click on gradient. And then we'll select the stroke over here and make that white. All right, so let's take this stroke weight up quite, quite a bit. Say right around there, 14 points. And then click on stroke and click on dashed line. And I have the dash already set as 60 points, the gap 60 points. So that kind of defines the width of the actual dash and then the gap between them. All right, very simple. And then another thing I want to do is kind of create a cursor uh, icon. So I'm just going to take the pen tool. And first I want to click on this just so we have that, uh, the, the solid foreground, no stroke there. And then I'm going to just click anywhere around here. And then click, yeah, straight down, just hold shift and left click and then up right around here and connect them. All right, and then I wanna take the rectangle tool 
and just drag down roughly around there and I'm gonna rotate that with the move tool and try to get it situated so it looks pretty correct in terms of this width and that alright and then I'm gonna take both of those left click hold shift both of those go to window pathfinder and then select this to merge and unite those shapes into one single shape alright so then what we can do is get this into position I don't want it to be that large maybe right around there and then one final thing I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and right around here left click and drag and I want to move this down with my arrow key the down arrow key on my keyboard so that there's no uh, line in between those take that control C and control F to duplicate it hold shift and rotate it to 90 degrees vertically move this into place doing the same thing using my left arrow key and yeah right around there and then also come up here take this one and move that into place now let me zoom out here this one needs to come in one more actually one more space All right, and so that is it. So it kind of makes it look like uh, we're pulling this off a section or something of the canvas or something, and that will be basically the t-shirt design. So once you have this all done, and you know, if you ever have outlines or strokes, uh, or if you have text or anything like that, before you go to import it uh, or upload it to, or give it to anybody who's going to be printing, uh, whether it be you know a magazine or, or poster or t-shirt you have to make sure everything's converted to outlines so what that means is if we select this you know we still have the option of editing the stroke so that's not converted to an outline so what you would do is take that what I like to do is just select everything just to be safe and go to edit no go to object path and outline stroke and it's also good to take everything as well, object, expand. Now we make sure everything is now an outline. So you can't really edit the stroke anymore because it's been converted to outlines. All right. Okay, so now what we want to do is take this and just scale it up a little bit. And just position it so we're getting as much space as possible that we can use from this area and I don't know I think I still might want to drag that down make that a little bit smaller we don't want it to be you want it to be like overshadowing or the size of the actual logo because that's the most important point right around there is good all right and then finally the we'll go back to the layers and hide the background because we don't want the black the black there but we still have all the white all right so now what you want to do is just save that so just hit uh, control s to save and we'll call this t-shirt front and I haven't used my hard drive in a while so it always lags for a little bit and there it goes save that hit OK and if you wanted to do a back you could do a back as well I'm not gonna really bother with it uh, so now what we want to do is you know this is depends on whoever you want to, you want to use for your t-shirt printing service so I uh, if I come out over here is zazzle.com I uh, I've used them before 
Now they can be really pricey if you're only printing one shirt or you know a small quantity of shirts. In the past, I've uh, I've ordered shirts from a local place. They printed it up, and I think I did like 300 or so. And it was for sh for a black T-shirt with one color, it was like four dollars or something. But uh, this is going to end up being like 30 plus dollars. So, I uh, basically all I have to do is go to create on this website men's apparel I'm gonna choose as you can see it has all the prices a basic white t-shirt $18.95 and obviously you know you can add your own designs on it um, a black t-shirt is like almost $10 more practically um, so I'm just gonna choose this one right here and close out of that make the uh, t-shirt black all right, and then go ahead to add image, upload new image, and click OK to upload. And it should place it onto the t-shirt. And what's kind of cool about their system is they automatically kind of warp the image to make it look as though it's you know literally a part of this guy's t-shirt that was a picture was taken out of so kind of cool uh, so as you could see you know this size we've maximized you know what we were able to do although we were probably could have went a bit uh, more in height but that's no problem um, so yeah basically what we would do at this point you know they give you a bunch of different options uh, is just go ahead and add to cart and that would be it. This may, I'm not sure if this is going to be the shirt that I actually order. I may add the designcourse.com down there. But anyhow, yeah, you get the point. So if you ever needed to order or get a t shirt printed real quickly, well, just use uh, Adobe Illustrator or any other uh, <coughs> vector graphics application. And you can go to a site like zazzle.com. You'll, you'll spend a bit, you know, plus the shipping is going to be a little bit pricey. But uh, yeah, uh, very simple to do. Just got to make sure you have your file uploaded correctly. And yeah, you could also use Photoshop just to let you know. I know when it comes to Photoshop and print, you generally want to stay away from print. But I mean, you still can do it. You just have to make sure, for example, if we go into Photoshop and you go to File New and what was that size? I think it was... Uh, you know what, I don't even know what, I can't remember what the size was. I'm just going to say 13 inches, 17.9. It was something like that. You just have to make sure your resolution is high. Like this is 72 is for a website or for web display. Uh, you want this to be at least 300. And color mode CMYK, hit OK. And there you go. Pretty much everything still applies. And you'll be able to do that uh, in Photoshop. So just a pointer. All right, so I uh, probably when I order this up, it'll be ready. Maybe it might be here in a week or so, and then I'll start wearing that instead of the jacket as it's getting hotter outside. All right, so I will see you tomorrow with a new tutorial. If you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and subscribe here at YouTube.